God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Sometimes you slip. Sometimes you slip from, you know, you, 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 you slip, you can slip on the curves, you can slip up and, and uh, uh, get drunk, you know, uh, you, you, can, you can make mistakes, whether it's a technical mistake, whether it was a moral mistake, uh, but we make mistakes, you know, but one of the things on that dating, and I'll get a script that I want you to read this, and we can go through it. You can we can go through it a little bit at a time, but let's let's look at that because I want somebody by walking daily. It's just these. This is one of my favorite passages. You know, you've seen it many times. I brought up, so, but but it's one of my favorite. Uh, read that for us. Romans eight one. Yes, sir. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus what? has made me free what? from the law of sin and death. What? 83. For what the law could not do, what? that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yes. And for sin. Right. Condemn sin in the flesh. Yes. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Come on. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Well. They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Right. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh huh. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Right. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Can be. And you know, the reason I'm saying I like that was the first piece there, because a lot of us, our flesh, we as a group and as individuals, have this condemnation challenge that we have to deal with. You know, it's funny to talk about when we, we talk about even relationship. You ever, you know, the old saying is, your, your wife's not impressed with you, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, other people may be impressed. She ain't impressed no more. Pastor, can, can, huh? you, bring up, can you bring up that scripture again? Yeah, one second. Eight seven. Uh huh. It says because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Right. For it is not subject to the law of God. No. Neither indeed can it be. No. So those who are outside of Christ. Right. Though the law condemn them. They're not, they're not subject to it because they, they can't be. Well, here's the point on that. Yes, we're talking about the flesh, cardinality. Yeah. Right? What happens to the body when it dies? It goes back to the dust. Does it ever have to worry about hell? No. Does it have to worry about con eternal life in hell or in lake of fire, eternal punishment? Oh. Not that flesh. That flesh, though, that flesh does not care. Once it's gone, it's gone. That flesh knows that when I die, I'm finished. I'm through. Ain't nothing gonna bother me no more. You can take me and leave me in the street and let cars run on top of me all day long if you want. You can let the birds and animals, cattle, or lion eat me up if you want. You can yeah. throw them out in the ocean and let a fish eat me up. And it, I don't care. You never heard dead flesh. Flesh don't care. But that's so. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm, I'm looking at. Eight six for the carnally minded is death. Yeah. To be carnally minded. Yeah. 
Yeah. So to to only think of this spiritual world, uh -huh. and and I mean not spiritual, but to only think of this physical realm and nothing else, yes, and be caught up in the wickedness therein, right, is death. Yeah. Because okay? you're so and that's not just that's not just a a temporary thing. No. That is an eternal death. But if that is a, a death. But because the reason why I say that is it says, but to be spiritual and minded is life and peace. So yes. even after a physical death, there is still death. Yes. There is the separation of God. Right. The permanent separation. But but to be spiritual minded is an eternal thing, and there is no suffering. No. There is no right. no no hell right there's no lake that burns with fire so there's life right. and peace and peace because i don't in other words in other words i have i have already finished the race in christ yes i've already locked up eternal life that this you just you mentioned earlier about the three days that jesus possibly was separated from god yes but it was just three days the the flesh is separated from God until it becomes a glorified body. Yes. Right? In other words, this flesh is when man became wicked and sinful, that death means separation. Yeah. And in my flesh, remember when we read the scripture, the scripture before that, chapter seven, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So your flesh, my flesh, this skin is separated from God. Yeah. But it's just a house. It's a house. Earth it's suit. It's just an earth suit. That's all it is. That's why it's not subject to the laws of God. And neither can be. Because it's just like your car out there. It, it, it doesn't move. It, it won't move unless you get in it. It won't turn. Unless you turn it, right? But so to say that our flesh, our flesh does not, is not subject to the law of God because it ain't worried about what law? Law what? I'm already dead. I'm, I'm dead. No, it's it's already, born, it's already predetermined. Once you're born, you're already in the stage of God. Yeah. When you're born, you already have a shelf life. That flesh. That flesh has a shelf life. It has a shelf life. It's already been preordained, and history yeah. would tell us that, right? There's nobody physically that we're aware of that have not taken, the flesh has not taken a dirt nap. Except for Enoch. <laughs> Except for Enoch that we never met, but we will meet one day. And I think even him, because they believe in when that, there's two people that hadn't died. Right? Because the Bible said there's a point in time for every man to die, right? Yeah. There's only two people that didn't die. And there's a revelation there's going to be two prophets. Yeah. Huh? And they're yeah. going to die. And they're going yeah. to be dead for three days. And then. Left in the streets. Yeah. And then they're going to get up. Yeah. And then the whole world going to look at them getting up because the whole world going to party. Every, they're gonna party. They're gonna celebrate. We got them. We got them. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And then they're gonna see them get up and go up, just like Christ. Remember, yeah. Christ, he left them. Yeah. He ascended up. Ascended up. Yeah. And that's what they're gonna do. And then we, in first with uh, Corinthians. Oh, that's that's supposedly, and it's not stated. Enoch and. Uh, uh, Elijah. Yeah. Those, Elijah was taken up in the a chariot of fire. Yeah. Right. Those are the two people that didn't die. Yeah. You know, so I would say, well, maybe it could be, could be anybody. I'm just saying, those are the two that didn't die. It could, it easily could be Moses doing it. It could be easy. John could be the one coming back. Yeah. Uh, but all I know is those two did not. And those two will die and get back up. And see, we're already gone if we be in Christ, in which we are. 
because all you do is make that decision. Once you made a quality decision, you have connection. You've been reconnected to life and God through Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, and we just read for the people to listen to this, there is no condemnation to those of Christ Jesus. The only time is when our minds become cardinal. And that's why I'm saying that we have to, we should practice living daily by faith. By faith. Yeah. Which really means daily spiritually minded. Now some that's people it. think that, but as in that they, and I want to throw this at people, See, we want to think that means you're walking in perfection. No. <laughs> of your, your flesh. And that's no. where we get in condemnation. Yes, your flesh. Remember the scripture says, people listen. In Revelation, in John, Romans 7, chapter 7, Paul clearly told you and explained to you, in my flesh, well is no good thing. No good thing. You 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 not only in Psalms, I got in these scriptures here and we won't get to it, but the Bible says he who dwells in the secret place of the moment. Yeah. Abide under the shadows of the altar. Right. The, the, the thing is that our flesh, hey, our flesh walks through the shadow of death. Because it's gonna die. Yeah. Unless you're caught up one day. You know, I, I, I truly like how Paul, who basically wrote most of the New Testament, this man said, I found a new law. <laughs> he said, hold up. Look, I know y'all know about gravity. <laughs> But let me tell you about this new law. New law. Those sins, those things that I would do, uh -huh. I do not. Yeah. Yeah. And those things that I wouldn't do, those things I do. <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey, look. Why, just to let you know, your wife reported the, uh, uh, the Trump the debate. Party. I mean, uh, the, 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 not Trump, but. They got both of them on there. I'm not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch both of them. I know they on CNN. They're, said, they're on. CNN is going between. Oh, CNN is going back and back and forth. And they say that yeah. the ladies try. I, I I can't hear what they saying, but you can see the lady trying to, you know, talk to Trump to help him balance out. Yeah. Oh. That, that joker. That joker. <laughs> that joker. You can see that joker. You know, he says a while. They said Trump gives wild answers on QAnon. Between conspiracy theory, she said he doesn't know if the Dems are running satanic uh, pedophile rings, but he's you know. So he didn't so he, say that. He didn't say that QAnon stuff. He, that's what he got on there. Uh, that's oh what wow! Got there. Right now he said it, you know. So I'm just saying this, but Jesus. I just said, see if she recording it for you. Uh, yeah. That man needs Jesus bad. He needs Jesus. Like he really do. I know it. You know, we was hoping that he would have got that. You, you know, Christy came out today and said, "Man, I, I was wrong. This stuff." Yeah. Really yeah. He, he said, "He said the one place I thought I was gonna be safe at the White House, I get COVID." He said, "I was wrong, and now I have my mask on." I was wrong, guys. He's telling me, "I'm wrong. I was wrong." And he said, "Y'all, y'all need to wear your mask because this stuff is this stuff ain't no joke." Yeah. This stuff is not a joke. And we all, that's why I want to be, be uh, trusting God and not trying to please man. Because you have some of, you know, they, they interview some of the people, right? And they sit there and say, there's one lady say, well, I trust God. Well, why are you tempting God? You're not even putting on your mask because you're going to say God's going to heal you. But you're not you even know, this man, did you hear that he said there's only one person better than him and that was Jesus? He, who said that? Trump. I hope he did. He did. Deep. Deep. See? So, you know, he's the polls are tearing him up right now. Oh, he, 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 he already anyway, right. I don't even want to talk about that, that, uh, that lost soul. Yeah. We, well, he lost yet. I think this is going to, uh, I think even. Well, a, he ain't found. 
<laughs> hey, look, some people going to be deceived, right? There's a lot of people walking in deception. Some people are throwing their Lord into a party. The party has been taken over by people who have some bad hearts, you know? Uh, cardinality, you know what I mean? When you kill a man, yeah. with a, you know, with police, even the police, when they do something, like that guy, you know, called, before you came, they called him with some more money for a police thing, law enforcement. Uh -huh. uh, I said, I already gave. I already gave. I gave early. Uh, uh, that's just like the people from the, the fire department. You no, know, nah, I eat at Fire Deli. That's all y'all get. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. <laughs> but the thing about it is, that everybody is a criminal or thinks certain people are criminals. And, and especially with the fact they are looking at a lot of, uh, I think you brought it up, where somebody was showing me today, or I look at on, on that on some of those videos, you know, face or whatever, uh, a white man was apprehended. He had a knife stabbed the officer in the neck. The officer pulled his gun out. The guy's running. He runs behind the guy. Yeah. He pulls him until he catches him. And then handcuffs him and arrests him. And he had a knife. We seen people in that man, a New York guy. He had a little yeah. knife, and the man shot him seven times. He said, yeah. "Well, I just wanted him to drop the knife." Really? No, nah, it ain't. It ain't got. It ain't got nothing to do with what they have and what they don't have. Nah. It has everything to do with their color, the color of these people's skin. Yeah. Yeah. And what they're trained to do. I, I saw it there. I saw it there on TikTok. The guy was living uh, a similar to Groundhog Day, right? And he's getting shot. In, you know, he gets shot by the police. He, the police pulls up, and and, and he says, uh, "License registration." He said, "I am slowly reaching down to get my registration." And the cop go. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And shoot him, right? And and each time they they, they replayed, they relived the the groundhog day, uh -huh. trying to find a way to keep him getting shot. <laughs> but he still get reasons to get shot. He's trying yeah. to he's trying to he's trying to catch on different ways that license registration. He had a license out already. He's a registration. He got it. Because he knows what he's gonna do. To have me yeah. go, don't do it, don't do it. Uh, you have a gun? Yes, right now. <laughs> do I have a gun with me right now? If I had, no, I don't. You got a gun? Do you have a gun? If you shot him. The, the point is just reliving. Yeah. Out of way for the man over shoot him. The, the point I'm saying is that the mentality of somebody that trained to think that way. That means that's a carnality way of thinking, not a spiritual way. And that's where it's death in, in, in the carnality. You know? We got law enforcement that feel they have to shoot you to enforce the law. Opposed to, I am the law, you will obey. And if you obey, we'll, we'll get through this. You know? But my first reaction. And they're actually, they are not the law. They're enforcing the law. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not breaking the law, why are they trying to enforce? There, there's nothing to enforce. Right. So. Yeah, you got guys. That, that's that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. You see the on that TikTok thing they were showing that the people say, "Hey man, I'm being this guy's checking me and say I stole something." You know, and he's patting me down, and I have he ain't gonna find nothing. And then as the guy said, he had, a, he had his food like hamburgers or something. Give the guy say, you got a receipt for that? I don't need no receipt for food. It's food. What, what, what do you think? <laughs> this ain't a product. That's a food. It's right. <laughs> yeah. Or somebody going through a neighborhood and say, why are you why are you asking me? Why are you why are you walking down this street? Say, I, I, I seen a I seen one with a guy who was a cop. He got pulled over. And the guy said, yeah. Yeah. why did you go down this street and not go down a different street? And, and why are you stopping me, though? That was the guy was like. And he said, do you have any weapons? He said, yes. 
Yeah, don't reach. Look, come on, reach. He said, he said, where they at? He he didn't even move. He said, I got I got my gun in my glove compartment. And he just sat there. He says, you have a license? He says, yes. He says, can you show it to me? He said, no. He says, I'm not giving you a reason to, shoot to kill me. He yeah. says, you can reach in my pocket and get it. He says, but I'm not getting it. Yeah, I'm a whole on this. He says, do you have any knives? He said, yes. He says, where? Above my head. And he didn't even look up or nothing. Mm -hmm. And he said, he was, he, he now knows how a civilian feels when they get pulled over because he never did see it until it actually happened to him. Yeah. How dangerous and, and scary it is. Yeah. You remember that guy that shot that the girl was filming him? He got shot. And he yeah. was trying to show yeah. his license. And the guy said, don't do it. And the defense he had was, I just went into a zone. You know, I think the problem is, is they didn't have no reason to pull him over. And he didn't have no reason to pull his gun. Yeah. Yeah. And and the crazy thing is, and and, and we got off on this tagging. Okay, yeah. But uh yeah. the NRA never said nothing. Because That's the guy said, I have a license yeah. for my gun. Right. They do not do it And they... the NRA never said one word. Nope. They never said one word with that uh Breonna Taylor's uh fiance right. who right. had a license to carry his gun. And defended his home? and by law had a right to defend his home exactly right you never see that do you you and know you never hear nothing from the nra speaking about that man well how about the fact there's like one kid like that movie um the, the hate you give remember the hate you give yeah. like, and the, 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 the whole thing was about this kid that had a uh, a poem in his hand but it caught me and shot him but i thought he had a gun yeah. So wait yeah. a minute, is there against the law to have a gun? The, the boy that was operating, the guy was killed in Georgia. Uh, I, I thought he had a gun. <coughs> he didn't have a gun. But if-, if, but if They was, don't even say that. They say my life was in danger. Yeah. From That's, what? I thought he had a gun. Yes. Yeah. Well, you how are you in danger from a thought? And on, I, why is it dangerous? Why can't he have a gun? Was yeah. he at you? Right? Did he draw it towards you? Right? Did he threaten you with the gun? No, I didn't give a he didn't have a chance. You know what there I mean? There's something that I think causes us at some point to say you're peculiar people. Uh-huh. And and one of the things about our existence is that we are able to look beyond the material realm and even the influences of the dynamic of the material realm and see God working. I, every time I, I think about that young man that was shot seven times at point blank range and that guy got out of the hospital today, I don't know what kind of damage when he paralyzed, I heard. Uh -huh. yeah, and that's something else. You don't hear nothing about that no more either. Yeah, then if he shot that many times at point blank and walk away from it, that's, that's an intervention of God to me. You know what I'm saying? And I think that those things are available to us 24 seven, but there's a, there's a positioning that has to take place. And I think for me, our positioning was the thing that got me a little bit unnerved. Black people seem to have moved a little bit steadily away from God as we progressed on with whatever our freedom in the world weren't. And um, because the word itself says that God before you can be against you. You know, so how did God get against us? You know, what, what happened to our you. people that caused him to remove his hand? Or did he really? Or, uh, you know, that, that, and that's, that's why I, I, I'm trying to figure that stuff out, man, because I know, I, I feel pretty confident that if God is with you, you know, man, no different way. But well, if you ain't with you, no matter who, who is, nobody can get no help. Well, the thing about that, that's why I said, be careful you say us. You want to say to the people who have walked away from or never received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, who don't live daily by faith, that he's with you. You know, that was the title, that's what the title is all about is walking right. daily by faith. See, by faith, it doesn't matter. Somebody said to say, uh, I've been walking to a store. I was in the store, I was in there. Uh, 
And I'm gonna tell you, I was, I was afraid, Harbor, Harbor, afraid of what we call it. I was looking for the, the, the thing to fix my RV. And I saw this uh, elderly white guy looking, you know, looking, I saw in the corner of my eye looking at me, right? Look, he looked like he was concerned about something. And, and you know, I'm like, I'm just going about my business. I keep doing what I got to do, right? Then, that was on one end of the aisle, right? Hey, everybody asked it. I go to the other side. That joke was uh, going to the rounding corner of the, you know how those different shelves are. Uh -huh. Round the corner, and then he came to the other side looking looking at me, right? You know, you know I was like, you know, I, I, I noted it, but I'm just trying to do what I came to do. And finally, one of the store managers you know, came up to me and his eyes were looking kind of like he was like ready to be offensive, ready to be, but not all the way. It's more like his uh -huh. eyes said, sir, can I help you? <laughs> oh yeah. He looked, he made the clear. Yeah, I'm trying to see whether, is these all the uh, uh, stuff you have, what I was looking for? I said, these are all the uh -huh. things you have? Uh, yeah, that, those are the ones we got. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to find, I'll tell him why I need it for. And I said, is that uh, for expensive RV? So now look, okay, now you see, this is a guy that owns a very expensive piece of uh -huh. something that needed to fix. Being very polite. And the guy interviews him because he's like, now he's helping me to buy it. And, and, I, and I walked out, you know, I got back. I said, do you have military discount? You know, all that stuff. And all of that I failed to do was to see where that white guy was. That elderly man. Because I'm pretty sure he called that guy and trying to say, hey, man, this yeah. guy. Yeah. You know, it happened to me at Walmart, right? This, this was a hybrid. It, uh, it, it actually it happened to me at Walmart, but guess who the, 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 the people were? Oh, who? The two black females. What she said, you, you look at some black females. I, I, I walked through the store and I was, um, I left some out of car, so I had to go back to this out to the car to get it. So I walk, when I walked back in, the young lady was describing me to the other one she was talking to. Uh -huh. And uh, I heard, overheard the conversation. When I, the closer I got, you know, they broke off in the conversation. But they identified me as being a suspicious character. Now, what I did that was suspicious, and I said, I haven't supplied this idea, but every time I go into that store, the one young lady treated me the same way. You know? And so I was, I was, I was looking, because, I mean, you do experience those things with my white brother, and, probably on a greater scale than you do without anybody else. Right. But I've seen us do that. I mean, I, I've seen people with this woman, I mean, brought me into suspicion for what? Yeah. That's there was the, that, that, and she communicated that to somebody else yeah. who took up the mantle and took it further, you know? And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm being watched when I walk in the store because I was supposed to have done something. Yeah. Did they follow you around the store? The one girl did. I would have said, hey, since you following, why don't you come over here? I got some stuff I need you to air to carry for me. <laughs> why are you following? I'll do that on the head, I don't want to.